thanks for tuning in. Today I want to share my entire Chanel collection, but first and foremost, with all the craziness that's going on, I hope everybody is safe and doing okay. I actually took a little break from making videos and I just uploaded some pre-recorded content that I had. I, have, I was feeling a little overwhelmed with everything that was going on, but I figured I would be spending a lot more time at home and I thought I would utilize the time to still be able to create some videos that I hope are entertaining for you all and you know give you a few minutes to take your mind off of things. So I had gotten a request to share my entire Chanel collection. I'm not going to lie, that felt a little bit daunting, uh, but again, I was like, I have the time. I might as well dig everything out and see. I had done a Chanel collection video, I wanna say in like 2018. So it's been a couple years since I have been collecting and I have to say 2019 was definitely a big year for me in terms of adding a lot of pieces. I'm going to be going by different categories. So I'll cover like all my bags first, my shoes, my ready to wear, accessories, things like that. I thought about doing everything in chronological order, like that would be really cool to see all the pieces I added over time, but that just felt like it was a lot more work to piece <laughs> the timeline together. And I figured it would be easier to talk about all of the items uh, like in their category. So I'm going to just jump right into it. Normally I like to put little labels in the video that have the explanation or like name of all of the items, uh, but just given how many pieces I'm going to have to get through, I feel like that would just take a lot of time. So I am going to be adding all of the details, like all the style numbers and things like that that I can find in the description box down below. So definitely click the description box down below and you'll see all of the details there. If you see me looking down, it's because I'm referencing my notebook. I wrote down uh, some of the notes I want to cover for each style. I'm going to start off with bags because handbags is definitely the first thing that I started to collect from Chanel. That was the foray into the world of Chanel for me. For my handbags, I'm actually going to be going in size order. So I'll be starting with the smallest handbag going to the largest handbag. That would give you a good sense of like capacity for all of my bags. The first Chanel piece that I ever owned was this wallet on chain right here so this is the half moon wallet on chain it's in black caviar with silver hardware and it has the magnetic closure and just the long strap that's tucked inside i purchased this in 2014 this is now a discontinued style i think they discontinued it in about 2016 or so uh, so you will see some of these styles on the pre-loved market that I highly highly recommend you check out uh, Given it is a walk style. It is a bit smaller But because of the shape it doesn't have such a rigid structure like you know Like a rectangular walk does you can fit a lot inside of here. So it is definitely uh, a very well-loved piece in my collection. I use it a lot. The next bag is the iridescent, it's like a purple iridescent color. It's a reissue wallet on chain and it has the like rainbow hardware. As you can see, the strap is tucked inside here. So it's like a rainbow oil slick type hardware. This is from the Fall Act 2 collection in 2017. I purchased this in 2017. I And this is a lambskin bag. This is one of the few lambskin bags that I have and it is definitely well loved. I've worn this a ton and it is a very versatile piece. The next bag is this burgundy rock style. I purchased this in 2018. This was a seasonal piece that they had done at that time. I think I purchased this in the springtime, so it was probably part of spring summer 2015. It just has two compartments on the inside. I actually have like a whole separate video on, on this bag that I will link above in case you would like to see some more details. But I love this bag because it had like a mix of the boy style hardware with this like ruthenium more tomboyish like it was more edgy than the classic flap but it was a gorgeous gorgeous blue color and it was a really nice size so i picked this up in 2015 but the next bag is this item right here so this is my so black chevron classic rectangular mini it is with the distressed calf skin and a pvc overlay 
This was part of the spring summer 2018 collection. I think I did a whole unboxing video on this so I can share that as well in case you're curious to find out some more detail but this is also a very cherished bag of mine. I love the fact that it is so black, which means it's all black hardware with on a black bag, and it is just also a very versatile piece in my collection. The next size up is this classic small flap that I have, and um, it is in a gray color, it is a I believe this is a lambskin bag as well, but it, is, it feels a lot tougher than the reissue out on chain lambskin that I have. I purchased this in 2019, summer of 2019. I think this might have been part of the tail end of spring summer 2019 or the first act for fall 2019. I can't remember, but I will write that down below. Uh, it is also with silver hardware. It is a classic flap, so it has the double flap inside. I have a what's in my bag and first impressions of this bag as well so I will link that video so that you can get some more information on this beauty but this was one of my holy grail combinations that I wanted to have. I wanted to have a light gray silver hardware classic flap from Chanel so I was really stoked when I was able to get my hands on this baby last year. Then the medium flap in my collection is this one. This is a tweed medium flap. It is like in a plaid pattern, as you can see, with the light champagne gold hardware. And it has navy lambskin on the inside and on the straps as well. This I purchased in 2018. This was part of like the fall winter 2018 collection and I just really fell in love with the pattern. I felt like this was a really pretty tweed color. Sometimes the tweed patterns can be really um, like crazy, so I really liked that this one was in like a pretty geometric pattern, if you will, and the colors were also very beautiful, and I just loved this whole border pattern as well. I just realized like I have a ton of what's in my bag and first impressions of a lot of these so I'll just link all those videos down below in the description as well in case you're curious to check them out. After the medium flap this is my jumbo. This is a vintage jumbo from I want to say 92 and it is in caviar with the gold hardware. This is the actual plated gold hardware and it has the vertical quilting on it. It has the pocket on the back and you can see it has a like a oversized double CC logo for the hardware. Um, this is one of my bags that I have very mixed feelings on. <laughs> if you've watched some of my other videos, you'll know why. But it is a piece that I still cherish in my collection and it is the only jumbo size that I have. After the jumbo, the next size up handbag I have is this Deauville tote. It is in the small size. I got this earlier this year. This is part of spring summer 2020 and it's in this gorgeous navy color. I actually just did a what's in my bag and first impressions on this one as well but this is an excellent work bag for me as well as I plan on using it for travel because I can put more things in than my other handbags. This is the most recent acquisition to my collection. The last handbag piece that I want to cover is actually this O case. I know an O case is technically a small leather good, but this is really like a clutch size. So uh, I wanted to include this in this section. This is my O case um, that says Chanel <laughs> and I purchased this I want to say uh, March of last year so 2019 this was part of the spring summer 2019 collection and I absolutely fell in love with the tweed pattern underneath and just how street style almost this looked um, with the little double CC on the zipper pull this is a great size as well, and as somebody who doesn't like to carry a lot of clutches, I find myself gravitating towards this a good amount um, because it just goes really well with a lot of my outfits. So this is the last handbag item in my collection. Moving on to shoes, 
I was actually surprised that I don't have as many shoes from Chanel as I initially thought. I think I've shared this in a previous video before, but shoes is one of like the least categories of luxury goods that I, I acquire, mostly because I like struggle with the fact that, you know, you're gonna ruin them when you wear them outside. Personally find that Chanel shoes the prices have just been going up and up and it's been getting harder for me to really justify purchasing all of them <laughs> to be like really honest so I think just given how I struggle to wear a lot of them on a daily basis in New York City walking on the streets I feel like I have fewer than I expected the first pair of Chanel shoes that I ever purchased were a pair of slingbacks and they are these slingbacks right here you'll see they're in a beautiful silver color I purchased these in 2017 I actually purchased these from Barney's RIP Barney's and I uh, I bought these right about when the slingbacks were making a huge comeback in like the traditional like beige and black cap toe or all black colorways. And this was the first time I saw them in such a fresh color like silver. I was like, what is this metallic silver doing here? Uh, so I went ahead and I picked these up and I have to say I've only worn them a handful of times mostly because the cap toe area is a little bit too small for me. I have like a slightly wider foot, I guess, than average. So uh, these aren't the most comfortable, but they are gorgeous on the feet. So I like to wear these for uh, like evenings out or like celebrations or parties, like slightly fancier locations because they go really, really well with a lot of dresses. So these are my espadrilles that I've worn a ton. They are actually in a dark navy color. I purchased these from the Duty free in uh, Incheon, South Korea, the airport there, and I love that I was able to pick them up from the duty free. I was shocked they even had my size because apparently they don't stock sizes larger than a 39, and these are a 39, I think. Yeah, so they had one pair in my size, and I was like, I am taking them. Um, so I like that these were the solid color and not broken up in the two tones with the different cap toe color I think those don't look the best on my feet So I decided to pick up these dark navy colors and I have worn these a ton since 2018 And then the last pair of shoes are these these are uh, these like silver with velvet cap toe little kitten pumps and these are like a 38 and a half yeah so they're a little bit large for me which is why there's like an insole and everything uh, but I managed to snag these on sale which is why I just picked them up even though they were slightly big and I have to say these are super super comfortable probably because it's, a, it's like a half size larger uh, but these are really comfortable and I like to wear these uh, to work because they are really low-key and just super comfortable to walk in so that's my last pair of Chanel shoes. I don't remember if I mentioned, but the last pair of shoes I got in 2019. So the next category is ready to wear. Ready to wear is definitely the growing part of my collection. As you can see, I have a good number of handbags. I have handbags that span all, pretty much all the sizes as well. I know there's a larger Deauville and there are larger toads and there are backpack sizes as well, but uh, I'm pretty happy with the handbag collection that I have. I like pretty Pretty much have a bag for most occasions in my life so I find myself being a little bit more interested in the ready to wear I'll go in chronological order of acquiring these pieces the first item is a blazer that I purchased pre-love from the real real that is this blazer here you probably have seen this in my last uh, Chanel collection video as well but this is from the 2015 cruise collection and I believe that cruise collection was done in Singapore. So this is a, it's a black and white, it's patterned, uh, but from far away, it kind of looks like it's gray. It's gorgeous. It has really gorgeous buttons. That's really what I fell in love with, which is why I went ahead and I purchased this from The Real Real. And I love this blazer. It comes in really handy in the fall. It's like thick enough where you can wear it as like an outer jacket in the fall when it's not too cold and then you can also wear it in the winter with another jacket on top so that's that's just really been versatile in my collection i think i purchased it around 2017 if not 2018 but i think it was 2017 fall when i purchased this item so by the time i purchased it it was 
uh, a couple of years old. The next ready to wear piece is also in a Real Real dust bag. I think the Real Real is great for Chanel ready to wear. They have really excellent prices and also a really great selection of pieces. So this is a cashmere sweater. It's like a sweater dress, if you will. I'll post a picture of what it looks like on. And as you can see, it has these gorgeous like turn lock CC buttons, which I think is adorable. It's in this really classic gray color, which I really, really like. I think it's nice and monochrome. And um, it's also very warm. So this is a great piece for the winter time. I purchased that in 2019. My first piece from the boutique it was this sweatshirt and I picked this up in early 2019, I wanna say. It's just plain on the back, but it has the double CCs on the front with a little bit of like beige contrast. I just didn't know that Chanel made such pieces <laughs> in any part of their collection. I think this was from 2017k yeah I think this was from like 17k when I purchased it in 2019 so uh, it had been in there for a while but I loved it and it fit me so I picked this up this was the first Chanel piece that I purchased from the boutique and then I guess that just opened the floodgates for me to pick up a couple more pieces from the boutique the next item I got was this black dress. I believe I did a whole unboxing on this piece as well. This was such a gorgeous piece that I just immediately fell in love and I knew I would be able to wear this for so many years to come. So this uh, midi length black knitted dress is also something that I picked up in 2019. And then last but not least, I also picked up this silk blouse from 2019 I believe this was part of 2019 fall collection but again I'll put all the details in the description box once I confirm all of that but I purchased this in 2019 it's like a bat wing style blouse and the back is just plain but uh, these buttons are also really pretty which is why I fell in love with this blouse but this is the last ready to wear piece I'm sure it's last for now I'm sure I'll be adding more pieces in the near future. All right, so that's all the ready to wear. How are we doing on time? You guys might want to pause and get a drink because we are now approaching pretty much the second half of my collection. I'm going to start off with small leather goods. I don't actually have a lot of small leather goods, which I want to... I want to kind of pat myself on the back because I feel like small leather goods is definitely that like rabbit hole you can go down. They're always so pretty at a more accessible price point that it just like you can get into a frenzy of really just picking up a lot of them, but uh, I don't have a lot. I have these two card holders. This is the first one that I picked up. I got this one in 2018. This is just a black uh, calf skin card holder. It's pretty plain. I like how uh, low-key it is there's no I mean there is definitely larger CC branding but it's still in the same like black color so it's not super super loud so I purchased this in 2018 and then December 2018 I picked up this item this is from the 19c collection it was the infamous 19c pink which is why even though it hadn't been very long since I picked this one up I went ahead and I bought this because I fell in love with this like Barbie pink color it is in caviar leather with champagne gold hardware and like I said it's from 19c so I have these two I use both of them a lot I have a full-size wallet that I use mostly on a day-to-day -day basis and then when I switch into my smaller bags I need to have a smaller wallet so I will interchange whichever one all the time I think I gravitate towards the pink one a little bit more because it is a pop of color and I prefer my small leather goods to have a pop of color but I purchased this again from the duty free in South Korea. The price was so good on this piece that I just had to pick it up. So I'm glad I have two because I, I can interchange and depending on what I'm doing, depending on where I'm going, I can pick a more like subdued option and I can pick a more pop of color that's like fun. The last small other good I have is actually this belt. It is a reversible belt so it is kind of a shiny black leather and then it's like a matte white leather on the inside 
and uh, this buckle comes off so you can wear it on either side. Had like a repair horror story on this one, so it, it has a little bit of a story to it, but I'm happy I have it in my collection. I like to wear this over a black jacket that I have, so I like to wear it that way. I also wear it over uh, some like shirt dresses that I have, so I purchased this in 2019. I look forward to wearing it more this summer. So those are all the SLGs and now I'm going to move on to costume jewelry. I have quite a number of pieces to run through so I'm going to try to not bore you to death with all of them. But the first pair of earrings I ever purchased were just a classic pair of CC studs. I got these in 2014 and I will try to do like close-ups of all of these so you can see them much better. But they're just these little CC studs that I got in 2014. These are technically part of their Rev collection which means they are like the standard classic collection that they come back year after year. Usually for the CC studs I think they're like variation so one year you'll see the they're a little bit larger one year you'll see they're smaller sometimes they'll have more crystals in them sometimes they'll be smaller slight variations like that but um, the CC studs are always considered a classic I don't think they really have like a seasonal number to them not to mention those have also been in some that has gone back for repair as well so I'm thinking about doing like a repair like a luxury repair service video and like my experience with that so far so let me know if you'd be interested in seeing that down below in the comments the next earrings i purchased were in 2017 so there was a little bit of a gap i think i was wearing the first pair a ton uh, but i remember walking into the soho boutique with a friend of mine who was visiting from out of town and i saw these i absolutely fell in love so i purchased these I don't know exactly what collection they're from and they didn't give me the um, little tag with it so I'll do my best to try to figure that out but I do know I purchased them in 2017. Then the next earrings are in this little, they're actually like a pill case but I'll show you one of these. These are a pair of vintage Chanel earrings that my boyfriend picked up for me. These are clip-ons. As you can see on the back it's just a clip-on but there are these large like pearl motif earrings that are so pretty these so i think these are more from like the 90s if i had to guess i got them in 2018 uh, but i'm going to start with all of my earrings first the next pair of the earrings i got i believe these are from 19a and they're just these much larger cc studs I liked these because they didn't have any embellishments on them because I'm kind of done with embellishments falling out. And uh, they also look slightly vintage given their size, given their gold color. So I liked that as well. I just liked how plain they were and they are actually, they look really good like with your hair up and just like a t-shirt. And when I went to Hawaii, I was able to pick up a pair that I missed out on. They are these pearl drop earrings and actually if you remember the silk blouse that i have in my collection the buttons are actually the same as the top stud part not that i'm a super matchy matchy person i liked these separate from the blouse i had seen these like a year or two before but i decided to skip on them and i really regretted doing that because i never saw them ever again until i walked into the hawaii boutique the Waikiki boutique and it was like there it was like waiting for me so I definitely I was super excited to pick these up last September these I picked up earlier this year but these are from the 16c cruise collection that cruise collection was in Korea that year Seoul that year so I picked up these flower motif pearl earrings from that 16c collection these were brand new in box that I picked up earlier this year. I think those are all of my earrings. I have now become a lot more particular about the costume jewelry pieces that I decide to pick up and especially if they're earrings and they have a lot of embellishments I make sure I like really really like them and really want them and I like them enough to deal with the fact that the embellishments might fall out. But um, in addition to earrings I have a few more pieces. I have this brooch this is like a classic CC brooch that has the leather going through the chain. Uh, this for me on the tag said 16B, so I purchased it in 2016 and it was part of the 16B collection. 
This though, uh, I have seen it come back. So I think they periodically bring it back because it is such a classic style and it is just really pretty to look at. Like my vintage jumbo, I have very mixed feelings about this particular item. I still like that it's in my collection. I just don't wear it as much as I'd hope to, but now that my hair is shorter, I think this summer is going to be a good time for me to try this out in a lot of different ways. I have one bracelet from Chanel. It is this bangle right here. And I purchased this during the sale last year. So I purchased it in 2019, but I believe it was from 2017C collection. And it is just a really, really cute bangle. I like to stack this with some other bracelets in the summertime. And then the last accessory piece I want to show you is uh, this hair clip from 20C. This is in a style that's very similar to my brooch, but it's a hair clip. This is from the 20C collection and it is super cute. I actually, I like wearing this in my hair. I didn't think I would like wearing hair clips that much, but uh, I do like wearing this in my hair. I feel like it, I don't know, it's just like a really easy way to jazz up your hair. And I've mentioned this a number of times, but I, I'm not a hair person. I'm so bad with my hair. Like, look at my hair right now. Look at it. But <laughs> because of that, I, I like these kinds of accessories that can help style my hair really easily without me having to, like, you know, try to curl it or try to blow it out or try to do anything to it. I have one home item from Chanel, and that is this pillow back here. Um, this is a navy cream combo pillow. I believe they have pillows as part of their collections. Usually I think it's like their fall collections periodically because I've seen a white and beige, like a cream and beige version. I've seen a gray version and I've seen a black version. So I don't know if all of those color varieties came out at the same time or if they have been phased out over time. I think when this one came out there was a black one that looks identical to it. Like So maybe those two came out at the same time but there's like a gray with a slightly different style I've seen before and like a beige and cream version that I've seen. This I picked up in 2019, again at the Waikiki Boutique. It was released with a matching blanket, but as you can see, I have the Avalon blanket and I was planning on getting the Avalon blanket in Hawaii and I did. So uh, I like, I, I just got the pillow here and the blanket there and who knows in the future, maybe there will be more, but I am really stoked with this pillow. I, I just really like it. <laughs> I think it looks really cute. And then there are a couple of pieces that my boyfriend has, but we can share them or use them together. So I thought it would be fun to include those in here as well. They are all costume jewelry pieces. First is this ring right here. It's like a medallion ring. It looks really cute on, let me find the finger that it fits in. So it looks like that. It's a bit oversized, but it's pretty classic looking and I think it's a fun accessory to have. This is technically his, but I wear it sometimes. And then the other piece, I think I hauled this earlier this year. Uh, I technically got it for my boyfriend for Valentine's Day, but it is this brooch right here and it is it's such a pretty brooch to look at he will definitely wear it and i will also try to wear as i figure out how to wear more brooches in the summer so that's everything that is my entire chanel collection as of march 2020. it definitely felt daunting to bring out all of these pieces but i do like that i was somewhat forced to do that because it reminds me of all the pieces that i have and it feels like almost like I can shop from my own closet again. It also reminds me that I should be very particular about adding new pieces to my collection. I am very ecstatic with the collection that I have. I'm very proud of the collection that I have as well, given that I have purchased, uh, if not all, like 95% of all of these items. Now is a good time for me to like reflect on the things that I do have and you know what kinds of things if any i really need to add to the collection given all of the sizes of handbags i thought it might be helpful to do like a size comparison of all the chanel flat sizes uh, but let me know if you think that would be helpful in the comments down below and i can make that one of my next videos as well i'm also thinking about doing an hermes collection video but just let me know if you would be interested in seeing that i think it would be interesting to see how different my collection is when it comes to Hermes, but 
uh, let me know and I can do that video for you as well. But if you have any questions on any of these items or really anything at all, feel free to leave them down below or head on over to Instagram and I'd be happy to help however I can. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate all of your feedback and support. If you like this kind of content and you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I post new videos every Sunday. So until next time, 